Hello, I'm Henage Mitchell. I'm a co-founder of FactAsia.org, which is a regional consumer advocacy. Uh, we're based out of Hong Kong and we're active throughout the region promoting the rights of consumers to choose, use and have access to sensibly regulated products, including e-cigarettes. Uh, Fact Asia represents the interests and rights of consumers throughout the region and India uh, has not had any surveys at all on the use of e-cigarettes or the understanding of smokers of e-cigarettes. In fact, our survey has clearly shown that uh, smokers in India have very little awareness of e-cigarettes, which are understood by uh, scientists, researchers and tobacco cessation activists around the world to be far less harmful than conventional cigarettes, 95 to 99 percent. So as a consumer group, uh, it's necessary for us to understand what consumers actually understand about the segment. Uh, we've conducted this exact same survey in nine countries around Asia and the key results actually are mirrored throughout the region. It's consistent, uh, which is a very interesting uh, turn of events, but clearly shows that India is on a par with all other regional countries with regards to their consumers' demands for e-cigarettes to be safely regulated and available, but falls behind most other countries in the region with regards to awareness of e-cigarettes and the benefits that they can introduce to smokers. India, as I say, matches uh, most of the region in key elements of consumer demand for access to information on less harmful alternatives to smoking. It falls behind much of the region in terms of general awareness of e-cigarettes and the benefits that they, they have, but it is very consistent throughout the region that smokers demand government give them information about and access to less harmful alternatives to tobacco smoking, which will kill at least 50% of all smokers unless they can find a way to switch to something less harmful or quit. Uh, India's uh, vaping community is relatively small from what we can deduce from our survey. Around 1% of Indian smokers have actually tried or used an e-cigarette, which is way below the regional average and clearly shows that the, the media and the government has been remiss in informing consumers of their choices. Regular tobacco products uh, are generally, particularly cigarettes, smoked. That means that it burns tobacco and all the constituents that are added to the tobacco, uh, including sugar, molasses and uh, any one of up to 500 or more food flavorings, uh, and it delivers to the smoker the nicotine, which is why they smoke for the nicotine, but also tar, particulates, carcinogens, and as I said, the 3,000 or more chemicals that are also present in tobacco. So smokers smoke for the nicotine, but they die from the tobacco. E-cigarettes do not contain tobacco. There is no burning involved with uh, an e-cigarette. It's a very simple device which has a battery, a heating element, uh, fluid or, or, or juice, which contains, uh, may or may not contain nicotine, food grade, food flavorings, uh, and uh, polypropylene glycol or glycerine and water. Uh, and it's delivering to the user essentially water vapor, vapor, not smoke. And the difference between vapor and smoke is chalk and cheese. Smoke will kill you, vapor comes out of your shower, comes out of your kettle, and it comes out of an e-cigarette. Indeed, uh, the number of Indian vapors is relatively small compared to the number of Indian smokers, about 1% we, we believe. However, that still represents a very large number of people vaping in terms of actual numbers. What it also would seem to indicate is that information about vaping has not been widely disseminated and is not widely understood either by consumers or the media and particularly by health departments, particularly those health departments that are banning vaping without any research uh, at all, despite the fact that there is 
a wealth, a huge body of scientific ed evidence and research which clearly shows vaping to be 95 to 99 percent safer than conventional cigarettes and that vapors who switch from tobacco products to vaping are very likely to either quit or significantly cut down on the use of carcinogenic lethal tobacco product. E-cigarettes are understood to be 95 to 99 percent safer than a conventional cigarette. Uh, this, these figures have come out of numerous uh, research programs and peer-reviewed. Uh, most recently and most importantly Dr. Hayek of Bart's University, St. Bartholomew's Hospital in London uh, reviewed all the evidence and concluded that they are 95 to 99 percent safer than a conventional cigarette. This research itself has been peer-reviewed and has now been accepted by the EU, uh, by elements in the US, by health communities throughout Europe and around the world. Uh, as regards to the long-term effects of e-cigarettes, nobody can really tell. Uh, what the long-term effects are, but in certainly the short to medium term there is no question, no doubt at all, that these products are far, far safer than the conventional cigarettes that they seek to replace. Banning e-cigarettes, in fact banning anything, is not a viable solution. Banning e-cigarettes is, in my mind, almost criminal because we know, uh, there's no question, these things are safer than tobacco. Uh, but by restricting access to them, you are condemning millions upon millions of smokers in India to an early painful death from tobacco-related disease. If you want to mitigate that, if you're serious about tobacco control, then you must, as the former head of the FCTC, the WHO's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, Dr. Derek Yak, has repeatedly said you have to adopt e-cigarettes as the number one strategy to encourage smokers to switch away from smoking. You, if you're a smoker, you know how hard it is to quit. Nicotine is a pernicious and addictive uh, substance. It is not particularly harmful. It is not carcinogenic, as many people believe. In fact, uh, numerous research has clearly indicated that nicotine has no long-term health effects. So a regular user of nicotine will never get sick from nicotine. He'll get sick from the tobacco that he's taking it with. So nicotine is not the issue here. There is no uh, health prerogative or demand for an end to nicotine, only for an end to tobacco. So if we want to seriously tackle the epidemic of smoking, which will kill a billion people by the end of the century, according to the WHO, then as Dr. Derek Yatch, uh, former head of the FCTC, and many of his colleagues are, are declaring ever more loudly, e-cigarettes are the most effective method of smoking cessation that has ever been introduced. Banning it makes no sense. It deprives consumers of the right to choose a product that could save their lives and it flies in the face of all the evidence. It's quite clear that the bans that have been introduced in Karnataka and elsewhere were imposed with no research whatsoever with no reference to the wealth of research that's been conducted elsewhere in the world and with no reference at all to the facts. They are absolutely unforgivably wrong and if you look at anything when you ban something you lose control of it and as everybody knows with the internet uh, uh, available to pretty much everybody, you can buy whatever you want online. So if you ban it, you lose control of it, you can't regulate it, you cannot determine what consumers are consuming anymore. By far the most sensible way to handle this, is, as has happened in the UK and the EU and this is happening in other parts of the world, is to regulate the manufacture of the products and the distribution to absolutely restrict access to this adult consumer product to children and underage users and to ensure that all smokers are aware that this is a product that can change your life, that you can quit smoking but continue to enjoy nicotine, which you can't really give up very easily, uh, in, a way, in a way that will allow you to enjoy yourself 
without damaging yourself and without damaging anybody around you. Decision makers in India need to look at the facts before they make decisions that affect millions of lives and could potentially lead to the unnecessary deaths of millions of smokers. Consumers need to be made aware of their choices so they can make informed, reasoned choices as to the products that they choose to consume. Please, do not cave in to the lazy way of ignoring the evidence and refusing to do any work and listening to the hysterical and incorrect actuations of health departments who are completely against e-cigarettes because they see them as being the same as cigarettes. They're not the same as cigarettes. People need to inform themselves and people need to pressure the authorities to ensure that they are given access to these potentially life-saving, game-changing products. E-cigarettes can save millions and millions of lives.